Okay, and the next speaker that I want to uh, invite here, it will be Conrad Lawton, who's going to uh, give us insights about um, crowdfunding, about uh, successful projects in crowdfunding, and uh, what you, and unsuccessful, let's say, projects. So please. Hello, my name is Conrad Lauten. Um, Ivo, do you have the clicker thing? Thank you very much. Um, so I'm working as a, a campaign specialist, a crowdfunding consultant for crowdfunding campaigns. I also do business development with lots of campaigns uh, because that's what they're facing. They not only do a crowdfunding campaign, they want to build their business. Um, in doing uh, panels and uh, panel discussions and uh, talks, I found out that uh, sharing um, campaigns that are successful is a very interesting thing, but uh, you learn much more from, from failed campaigns. That's why I started speaking a lot with uh, campaigns that didn't reach their goal and uh, if they're willing to, to share information on what they learned out of these uh, failed campaigns, out of the, uh, the, uh, the mis, uh, uh, misleading uh, things they, they found out during their campaign, we uh, learned a lot more than, than from successful campaigns because uh, that's uh, where you have to restart and you have to uh, do another campaign because it's uh, always always good to do a uh, restart. Uh, to put crowdfunding in a, in a perspective is also a very important thing that you keep in mind that it's only one one tool out of many in the marketing toolbox to bring your project to a community and to to grow a community to be able to uh, sell your product but also to be able to answer questions to uh, to bring your product your development to to a crowd that uh, will will use it uh, and that's why it's uh, always important that uh, there's much time well ahead of a crowdfunding campaign to to answer many questions with the audience already and to grow a community and uh, to show you uh, something about it i have a few examples and uh, later on a little bit more uh, theor theoretical stuff because it's much easier to learn from from campaigns that you see so there's uh, uh, just those platforms out there uh, one of the biggest campaigns that uh, were successful on uh, kickstarter in the last year was a a cool box. First, first off, we do lots of campaigns in crowdfunding. We don't do many software application, uh, software as a service uh, campaigns because they usually don't work on crowdfunding. That's why most of the campaigns that I'm, I'm showing, or uh, the, all the campaigns that I'm showing, are hardware campaigns because that's where crowdfunding, in terms of reward-based crowdfunding, where you get a reward back for your for your money is uh, uh, successful and is it's possible to to use with uh, um, everything else. It's it's good to go into crowd investing, which is also a part I'm uh, consulting. But uh, the, the the success cases uh, that we see out there are with hardware because it's uh, when you get something back, you're more able to to think well ahead and to pre-order something and to be able to, to give money to a project. This, one of the biggest successes in crowdfunding was a, a cool box. First, they were unsuccessful. They put a campaign out in, uh, in the wrong time, in the wrong season, with the very small audience. They wanted to reach $150,000. They only reached 100000 and uh, they learned a lot out of it. They changed the product a little bit. It's a very American product. Uh, you don't, I don't need it. You don't need it probably. But uh, America, everybody has a cool box on their uh, the truck pickup, and uh, they drive it around all year. And uh, so, uh, if if there's a, a mixer and a sound system and uh, whatever uh, everything else is included, they thought everybody want to buy it, but it didn't work for the first time. And then they uh, they changed their uh, campaign and uh, started a new one the next year. And this one uh, turned out to be a thirteen million dollar campaign. Uh, remember, like the first one didn't even reach the hundred and fifty thousand. Only six months before, uh, they changed the product for sure. It looks a little bit different, but it's just the same. The main thing they changed is the is the audience and the time of the year. So uh, in this time, in this case, failing was uh, the source for failing was the the wrong time. Like in winter, 
even people uh, there don't buy something uh, to use in, in maybe more in the summer. So they failed and the next time they started they had like these 13 million uh, dollar and uh, now they're they're developing their product. So that's a that was a, a big success case. Uh, the other cases that I'm presenting are uh, we're actually not uh, um, failing. They still do a restart now. They do another another campaign. Uh, for some of them think they they failed because they didn't reach those high numbers because that's what everybody thinks. Like they start a campaign, they reach uh, several million after a short time, and they will be successful. Uh, they're probably not, they're most likely not, because uh, PR, marketing, uh, connecting people is the, the main driver behind a crowdfunding campaign. Even if it seems to take off really easily, it's, it's usually not. It's a, a well-prepared campaign. A uh, campaign like, uh, I don't know, there's another big campaign that's actually unsuccessful. They wanted to raise 30 million, 30 million I think it was 32 million dollars. Uh, two years ago, uh, they only reached uh, 12 million, and so the money got back to the people. They didn't uh, succeed with it, uh, but it was the first uh, telephone, phone, uh, tablet campaign that got, uh, from my perspective, really successful. So they they got uh, 30,000, about 30,000 people interested in the product. Now they are producing uh, something with this knowledge, with this database of people, with the uh, with the backer that they have, and with the uh, the uh, their information that they know now what kind of product people want, and uh, a few other uh, platform, a few other um, software and hardware developers uh, jumped on this, and uh, uh, for instance, uh, right now there is. A, the Russian product that's uh, online since two days. Uh, I don't know about the number today. The slide is from yesterday. They uh, really sold uh, 230 pieces in the first few hours. Um, it's uh, um, um, probably everybody here knows the, the phone. Uh, the, the first two were a little bit wacky. The next one will be uh, out there in, in a few months. And they do this campaign actually solely for for the U.S. market to to go into the market and to and to pre-sell it there. And they they used all the intelligence out of the the old campaigns and uh, and they seem to do everything right. They are they are financing really good and they. Uh, they can uh, use this as a marketing tool. They give it a little discount, actually not too much. I think it's seventy dollars off the the final retail price, but still they uh, they are able to to uh, grow some audience, some people who are who want to have the the phone a little bit earlier than other people. So that's uh, if Apple would do it, would give out an Apple Watch like uh, two months early. Uh, they probably will do a great crowdfunding campaign. They don't need to use it, but. Uh, uh, um, Yota Phone seems to be uh, uh, a good a good product, and uh, they do for sure a good campaign. They do a very uh, um, emotional. The video you should look at the video. I don't have it here now. Uh, it's very emotional uh, uh, and not too technical. So that's that's what uh, people in the U.S. want for their phone. They want emotions and not the uh, the key technical part. Uh, there was a, a big success, uh, crowdfunding success, in uh, from. Uh, Helsinki, it's uh, Yola, it's a tablet that was um, on Indiegogo until a few few months ago. They they sold a few thousand pieces. Uh, very interesting because they have their own um, operating system. Yesterday I pronounced it wrong and it out came, it's Selfish OS, it's called Sailfish OS, but uh, Selfish OS might be also a good thing. Uh, actually the Russian government decided two days ago that they want to develop this into a Russian operating system for telephones in the next uh, few months. So let's see if this will be like a, a proprietary Russian system in, in, in not a, uh, in, a, in a short time uh, as they, they develop the, uh, the operating system from scratch. And uh, they, op uh, they do this uh, with the community uh, for, the, for the tablet. They, are really, they have a really strong connection to, uh, to, their, to their backers, to their uh, community. Uh, so they, uh, they, they sell to people that they knew before, but also they open up the channels to, to sell the tablet for uh, everybody in the world. And I'm, I'm really, they will deliver in the next two weeks, so I will, I will get mine soon. And uh, I'll, I'll see if the product is as good as the, as the, 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 the marketing was. Uh, they uh, are also selling phones. They will also do another campaign, and they are really, they really do a very good campaign. And uh, yeah, 
Um, another campaign that it's uh, that is uh, I think is very uh, was very successful and restarted is a, a, a controller device. They just restarted on uh, on Kickstarter last week. It looks a little bit more more sleek now, and uh, they they also uh, try to find new customers. So, as you see, like there is uh, for them the the 200, 250,000 that they reached until it was finished uh, was not a real success. They thought they will reach like half a million or so. What they found out during the campaign was that uh, their their key audience that they targeted was uh, professional people who use it for uh, the Adobe Suite and for things like uh, producing music and not for home automation, for uh, turning off your lights and uh, using YouTube and whatever. So uh, with the uh, with the rebranding, uh, now they are more into, they moved the, the whole uh, um, uh, face of the product more into a, a, a consumer and uh, let's see how this works out. But that's what they learned from the first campaign and they are, are so they are happy to do the, do the first campaign. That's a, a campaign uh, that's uh, from Berlin, it was not successful. Uh, however, they, uh, they are producing uh, vibrating grips for your bike, so it, it tells you when you have to go right or left. And uh, they also did it in the wrong time of the year, in the wrong market for the wrong price. US market too high price in the winter, nobody wanted to buy it. Even if they got lots of press and they got lots of people interested in it, uh, the people didn't really uh, convert into into buyers. Uh, they they are restarting now, and uh, let's let's see how they do it. But they generated lots of press, so they have like uh, pre-sales and uh, uh, companies interested in in buying the product for their bikes and so on. So. As you see, there's there's always more in crowdfunding campaigns than uh, than just uh, the funding. And if you are able to 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 start with this, to to start uh, um, well ahead of your your campaign and think about why you want to do crowdfunding, it's really good to to know uh, and to start uh, with some points out of here, like to to see. What do you want to do? Because money is only a very small part uh, of what you will get back, even if you only start for funding. For money, uh, in the end, you will know what your customer wants and if he wants to pay the price that you think it's, uh, is good. So it's always good to, to make this list and uh, be able to ask these questions yourself and be active about it and don't uh, wait until uh, the customer comes to you. In the end, you might also find out that your product doesn't have a market or it is a, it's a B2B mar uh, product, which is uh, really difficult to finance in crowdfunding. So there's lots of outcomes out of crowdfunding campaigns that can be valuable for your, for your product and for your campaign. Um, yeah, the, there, is no, there is no funding by accident. That's really something that uh, you have to keep in mind. There is no, all those big campaigns, they had a PR company behind it, they started, uh, many years before they start the campaign to grow an email database, to grow people that uh, test the product and uh, get feedback before they go online and have a um, few thousand addresses to, to post to before on the day one of the campaign to be able to finance it. Because crowdfunding platforms are good, but without your own work putting into the, the, the pre-marketing of the campaign, it doesn't make sense to go to a crowdfunding platform. It doesn't really make sense to go to Kickstarter, Indiegogo, whatever platform, because you always have to keep in mind that the first 30, 20, 40 percent of a campaign come from you, and then the the, come, the platform kicks in. Before this, uh, there's no amplification from the platform. The platform is nice to have, but it's uh, it's only a tool, and the tool helps if you can communicate yourself. So it's always good to have a, um, some budget on the, on the uh, PR and to be able to uh, convince the, 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 venture, the venture people, the venture capitalists that uh, giving money to a campaign a few months ahead is a good idea because preparation is, is key in crowdfunding campaigns. Um, yeah, it's just a, a, a graphic where you see where where crowdfunding is positioned in the uh, in the life cycle from for a hardware startup at least, and it's uh, to see that it's a very important part, but only one part for for hardware campaigns. Good, thank you very much. Uh, do we have time for questions, or do we do this later? Есть вопросы в зале по поводу crowdfunding? Oh, okay.
What is still more important, the idea, the, the product itself, or the PR campaign, or the time, the season, when mm. you post? The team is the most important, actually. Like uh, that's, uh, um, I mean, for crowd investing, it's even more important. But for uh, crowdfunding, uh, if you have a good idea and pitch it without a good team, it doesn't make sense. For sure, the time and the season, everything comes later. But uh, if you don't have a team, a good team, and people who uh, really trustworthy and uh, and they they are able to to execute, uh, that's it won't it won't work. Uh, for a Russian startup, would you advise to go to Kickstarter or Indiegogo directly or start with some maybe Russian platform? Yeah. Uh, the problem is you can't go to Kickstarter. You have to open a company in this. Germany or wherever. Uh, so um, it's it's really individual. You can't really say go to there and there. Like It really depends on where your market is. It really depends on uh, who you want to involve, uh, who will work with you on the campaign. So it's uh, I can't really say uh, go there or there. That okay, doesn't yes. make sense. Thank you. Uh, I noticed that you uh, had uh, fools there on the slide before the last one. Uh, it was fr family, friends, and fools. Yeah, who are those fools? Because I, I love fools. I'm a professional fool myself. So, uh, and then describe yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, uh, fools are are people who are uh, who don't care about the team, who don't care about uh, the 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 whole background of a story. They just chip in because they. There, there might be early adopters. They might be right in most of the times. They might be wrong in some times. And they, they are just people who spend money on. They play with their money and they get things back. Like I'm, I probably fool. Or I'm, I'm maybe I grew out of it a little bit. But I'm, I give money to many campaigns because I just like them and uh, and I f find them interesting. And uh, probably that's not the big money. But it's uh, what also counts is that I talk about it. That I that I tweet about it. That I that I uh, put money in and talk about it, and that's that's more the fool part. Uh, the family doesn't really talk about it except for in the family circle. Yeah, so it's about intuition, basically, yeah, like uh, spark. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I can. Oh, okay. Uh, good day, my name is Vasily Rajonkov. Uh, I want to ask you a question about trends in crowdfunding. So when it started in Kickstarter and Indiegogo a few years ago, it was like a systems and platforms for testing and relating your hypothesis, your ideas, your product. And right now it seems to me that the, the, the platforms and the, the movement itself is transforming. Uh, you said there that it's uh, more about PR and marketing. Uh, what do you see as a next step for crowdfunding? Um, to, to really integrate it into your into your uh, uh, approach, into your marketing approach, is what will be the next step. So people don't take it as as only one uh, as one thing that they have to do. It's uh, it's something out of the marketing toolbox. You, you use it. You use it really early. You might even use it before you have the real product, just to uh, to pitch something out to the uh, to the to the people that you want to ask questions to. Uh, so this might be something where it involves to, but it's, it's really like we, we are still early uh, in, in crowdfunding. Like it's just uh, just taking, it, it's still not taking off. The numbers are not very high. Like it's a, it's a few uh, a million every week for sure, but it's not a lot. So I don't really know where it goes to. I think uh, platform based will be something that will be, will go away in a few years. And uh, I hope even the word crowdfunding disappears because I don't like it. It's uh, just, it blocks yourself, so it's. Uh, I, but I, I don't know. Like it's uh, the crowd investing uh, in, in, and some niche. Uh, there are lots of different niche where crowdfunding is used. There will be platforms for all different niche, and so there might be. This might be something to look into, um, but uh, we will see. Like, uh, uh, can I ask uh, an additional question? Just one, one more. Uh, in practical uses, uh, say I, I'm coming from Skolko Foundation which is a kind of innovation center back uh, here in Moscow. And uh, say I have uh, three startups that are wanting to, to go to, to the crowdfunding this year. Uh, how can you personally and your team help uh, for them? We do uh, 
structure your your crowdfunding effort and put it into uh, the uh, a timeline and uh, see or when when to start communicating when to use what channels and uh, and then we we built we built the campaign basically and that's like involves everything from the video to the to the text to the social media timeline to uh, to pr how much does it cost that's another indivi very individual question. Like we do. Uh, okay, I'll we, we, just we, yeah. ask in personal. Thanks. Very good. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I think that uh, we can go for lunch break now. Спасибо большое, Конрад.